Hey guys, how's it going? It's Del Rey again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm going to be walking you through some of the C-sharp features that I learned over the last couple of days. I'm going to be walking you through how to use an action, how to use a funk, and how would you use an actual a predicate inside of a Unity game. So some of these features might be a little bit more advanced and some of them might be very simple. And But I'm going to be showing you some use cases of when you can use an action, and when you can use you know, a pretty key, and when would you use a phone. So let's actually jump into Unity and let me show you some of those features. All right guys, so I'm in the Unity scene that I, I have for my, my new game. And I'm gonna be going through, like I explain funks, predicates, and also using actions in, in Unity and why you would use some of those. So, so what I wanna do is I, I'm just gonna basically walk you through what I wanna do it. And the way that my, my game works right now is you have to basically place bombs around around the environment that you're seeing right now. And, and the goal is basically to to destroy the structure. So right now when you do that, there's really nothing that, that pops up if you lose or if you win. So, and I haven't really added any game logic, but I want to explain to you how we can use callbacks to basically show one of the menus that I have on the under the canvas. So if I go into my hierarchy and were to basically change the, so if I hit play, and enable that game object. The game over screen shows up, but I don't have anything tied to that just yet. So I'll walk you through how we can actually connect that in the code. And the same thing with the solving screen. So if I'll solve, let's say that I do destroy all the parts and I win the level, then I wanna show, basically I wanna show this, and I wanna show the level, and then how long it took me to solve it. So for this video, I'm only gonna show you how we're gonna be showing this screen. And then on the other videos, I'll show you a little bit more of what I'm gonna be doing for, for the game. So let's actually stop the game, and I'm gonna show you how the game works and what the explosion, how the explosion looks like. So I basically hit play, I go to a level, I, I zoom in, and I say that I play a couple of bombs in here. So let's say that I'm done, and I might want to also bring, you know, one of the cranes that I have in the game. And maybe I don't want to place it. Let's actually move it to, let's say there, or how about, let me just zoom out a tiny bit. We're still trying to tweak the game. Okay, so perfect. And that's basically too far, so but that's fine. We have nine of those, so I'm just gonna place one right there, one on the other side, one right there is perfect. And they're really not gonna reach because they're really far out, but that's fine. And then I can place, you know, a couple of bombs in here. And when I hit play or start, it's actually gonna try, so all the balls, the cranes are gonna launch the balls and the level completes and I'm basically done. So, but right now there's really nothing happening. So let's actually go into, go into the code. And what I have right now is I have a destruction manager and a bunch of singletons. So let me actually go back so I show you. So I'm gonna hit play. And when I hit play, you'll see that a bunch of singletons get created. I have a destruction manager that has a default ca countdown and I have an inventory manager and basically so on. So if I go to the, to the destruction manager, I have a default countdown of 10 seconds. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna hit start and then there'll be a countdown that it starts and that's gonna go down to zero. When that happens, that's when we wanna show the, the screen. And, and in this video, I'm only gonna show either the game over or the solve. I'm not gonna do any game logic. So if we go down here, I am gonna go to the, so right now I'm looking at the destruction manager and this, in the, this is the implementation of the countdown. So I have a default countdown variable, basically a variable to track the, the current countdown and then if I have added the countdown or not. So whenever the game state changes to demolishing, that means that I hit the start button and then I start a core routine that basically starts the countdown. So there's a couple of things that I wanna do in this video is the first, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I want to execute an action to show the solve menu. 
The, the next thing, I'm going to use a funk to actually show the game over menu and actually return the name of the player. And then lastly, I want to show you how we could use a predicate in a generic to return a bull. And basically, it's going to determine if we have any grenades left or not. So in addition to these, so these are basically our goals for this video. And I also have a utility manager. And this is basically the implementation of, of you know, using an action, using a funk or a predicate. I, I have different ones. I could actually add these to the singletons if I wanted to and manually type it in. But I wanted basically a, more of a generic, more of a utility that I could use you know, across the game and, and not having that tied to a specific class. So on e for instance, on, the, on this execute, the, the way that I can use the execute is I can actually pass in an action and that action is going to execute in the body of that method. So let's actually, let me actually show you how we can use this. So if you go back to the destruction manager, I want to basically launch the 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 solve menu. So so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do utility manager, and I have a couple of methods in here that are the ones that I just show you. So I'm gonna use the execute. And what I want to what I want to do is when this executes, I want to basically show the the game the the solving screen. So to do that, I'm gonna do Actually, let me actually go back to the UI manager. So I have two methods in the in the UI manager. One is show solve screen. The other one is show game over screen. So I'm going to execute this one. So if we go back to our destruction manager, I can do UI manager the instance that show solve screen, and I'm basically done. So and this actually. You don't want to include parentheses in here because that means that you're executing it. This, this method, it doesn't get executed until the callback happens. So if I go into the definition again, what's going to happen is a reference or a delegate is going to get passed into the action. And then when we get to the body of the of the method, that's when that, that, when that method is actually going to get executed. That's why I couldn't put in parentheses in here because this is basically a reference to that method. So. Let's see if this works. So if I go back to Unity and I hit play, I'm actually going to lower the, if I go to the structure manager and let's actually lower the countdown so I don't have to wait that long. And I'm going to hit play and I'm only just going to place a bomb somewhere. doesn't need to be perfect. And the destruction happens. We wait a few seconds and there's our solve screen. So the callback is great to basically pass in actions. I, if you look at the code, it was very, very, very simple. And the method that was responsible for showing the solving screen was the was in the UI manager. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of extraction there. And I can reuse the utility manager anywhere. So what if I wanted, so the next thing, what if I actually wanted a value to be returned from show solve screen? So if I use an action, an action can only execute an action. You can't really get anything back in return. So I'm going to actually comment this out. And I'm going to implement, I'm going to do number two now. And let's say that we wanted to, so I'm going to uncomment it. And I have another method, which I'll show you how it works. And let me actually go back into the utility manager. So it's very similar to the other. The difference is that we're using a func. And a func by definition can actually return a value. So in this one, we, we can only execute a method. On this one, we're going to basically execute the method and return its value. T, what T means is basically a generic. So we're passing in a generic type and we're returning a generic type. So if I want to return, let's say I want to return an integer, I could return an integer. If I wanted to return an object, I could return an object. So I, re I didn't really want to you know, specify here the type. Otherwise, I would have to implement that same method multiple times. And instead, I'm using generics to do that. So if we go back to the destruction manager, this method, I'm actually going to go into the UI manager so you can see. So this method is void, so it doesn't return anything. So on the next example, I'm actually going to return the name of the player. So and I haven't actually implemented the player just yet. So let me go into the, let's see, let me go back into the UI manager. 
and I believe I'm using yeah so I'm gonna be using let's see instance and I don't think I have uh, a variable for the name of the player so we'll just come in here and I'm just gonna execute a create a property that that gives us the name of the player right now it's gonna be hard-coded so we'll just do a public string and then maybe player name and then we'll just say it's my name that's fine and looks like that's fine and I'm using the latest version of C sharp so I can do can actually do this and that's actually going to create a setter and getter with that variable so that's perfect so let's go back to the implementation in the UI manager and I'm actually going to just do player name perfect so we're going to execute show game over screen so I'm going to go back to execute and return and instead of calling the show solve screen I'm going to do show game over screen and but right now we need the game of the player so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a string player name and we're just going to do debug.log and then we want the player name so just to basically walk you through this so we're going to use the execute and, re and return which is a generic static method that takes in a generic with a func that actually returns a generic so we're going to be passing in the or game over method through here this is going to be executed and the value that gets returned which is going to be in this instance a string is going to be the player name so if we go back into our game and I'm just going to hit play one more time and we're going to do the same thing and I hit play and let me actually go into the destruction manager I'm, I'm going to set the countdown to 5 go in and this time let's actually put a couple of bumps in here and hit start so just give it a few more seconds and if you notice we we got the game over screen which is different to the solve screen that we had before and we have the player name so that's basically a demonstration of how we can use a func to execute a method that returns a value so the last thing that i get a lot of questions from people is how would i ever use a predicate and why do i use a predicate so let's say that we want it to so without giving you too much information about the game because this is not purpose of is not the purpose of this video. I, I have an inventory manager and that inventory manager has an inventory entity and that entity is basically an array of, of items that I have. So it's basically my inventory. So each item it's gonna have basically a string representing the, 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 name, of the, the name of the item and also a quantity. So the way that I'm doing this, I'm basically loading the JSON file and each level has its own inventory so on some levels we may have you know 20 20 grenades some levels we have zero some levels we have more that all depends on the level design so so what i want to do is i want to as i use the grenades in this level at the end i want to find out if i have any grenades left so that's i can use a predicate to actually do that so i'm going to show you how to do that so if we go back down to to number three and let's actually go into the utility manager I also have a method that I that I created that is called is found, and the way that that works is also it's also it's a boolean. So the the way that I wanted to do is I want to return true if I have any grenades left, and I want to return false if I don't have any grenades left. And not only that, but I also want to return the I actually want to pass the inventory. So and then the predicate is going to basically be a lambda that is basically doing a work clause behind the scenes. So let's actually go back into the destruction manager and we're going to be bringing, bringing in our utility manager and I'm going to do is found but for the is found I'm going to use the inventory entity because that is basically the type and I want to pass in a list of items so or my list of items is going to be inventory manager instance this can be you know any type of list that you that you have in my case I do need um, basically I want to do it based on the inventory that I have and then I also need to bring in link so I'm gonna do using 
oops, no create a meta. So I'm gonna do using and then system that link. So okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna do a two a two list because that's actually actually yeah I think that's the way that this yeah I'm taking a, an argument of a list so I'm basically passing in a list and then the predicate so I'm actually gonna do a new line the predicate is kind of cool because you can do I can actually call this inventory or I can call it s or I can call it x so this is basically gonna be your log logical expression so that's what a predicate will be so if I do that I could say okay item equal equal grenades and I can say I can add a name and say okay I want this to be you know I want I want to make sure that I have more than one or at least one the in the quantity so I think that works I could actually call this inventory just like I like I say this is basically a variable and I could do that and looks like that works and then I want the return value so bool, and then we can call these uh, remaining grenades, perfect. Or you can call it are there any remaining grenades, and it's gonna be true or false. And we're just gonna do bug log, and then we can just actually say grenades. Do I have any grenades left as a question and then that works so basically to walk you through this we're gonna I'm passing in an entity of the actually type that I want to look for and then I'm passing a list of uh, all the inventory items that I have and also the predicate which is actually the logical expression so if we go back into the method just to walk you through that one more time Here's the list of items, and then my predicate, basically it's the logical expression that I show you in the destruction manager. Then we're gonna be basically passing that predicate to the find method of the items, and then we're you're gonna check to see if, if that doesn't equal null. If it doesn't equal null, that means that we found, the, we found grenades. If we have zero grenades left, basically this will return null, which therefore will be a false, so. Let's go back into our game and I'm going to actually hit play one more time. And just give it a few seconds and I'm going I'm going to go to my destruction manager one more time. I should have changed this to 5 to begin with so I didn't have to change it. Okay, so perfect. So now let's hit play. I'm going to go to level 1 and I'm actually going to put let's say 15 so we have we have some some left and I'm going to hit start. So I expect that to return a true when it ends. And if we go, it looks like we have a bug because it's returning, it's returning the value of false. So let's go back into our game and let's make sure that I have the logic correct. So I think, oh, I expelled that incorrectly. There we go. So let's go back, expel it right there and correct there. Okay, perfect. Let's go back and hit play. And let's go here. I'm going to change that to a four. Hit play. And I'm going to put, you know, a couple of grenades there and hit star. So I'm expecting to, to get a true value back. I also get a false. And I got to check why. So inventory. So this is the cool thing about this is we can actually go in and debug it. So. I can actually show you the debugger in v VS Code. So I'm going to go to my debugger and I'm going to hit play on the Unity editor. And we're going to go back here, stop the game, restart the game. And I'm going to go into this guy one more time. Let's actually put a four. And I'm going to put in a couple of granites. Okay, just hit start. Perfect. So what I want to see is what what is getting passed to. So I'm actually going to be bringing in. Okay, so let's actually step into it. I don't want to step into the inventory entity. 
okay and I actually closed my mail so you don't you don't get to see the emails that I'm getting okay perfect and let's actually step in step in one more time so we can see here the list of items we can also see our predicate so I should be getting an entity back it looks like I got no entities back I wonder if I have the the actual type and spell again so I'm gonna go back to let's go back into my core oh, okay so it's singular it's not plural and let's go back in here and this is supposed to be granny let's actually paste it okay an inventory quantity greater than zero okay so I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna basically replay and this time I'm gonna modify the the value my countdown value so I don't have to so actually change this to a four so we don't have to go back and forth and keep changing that okay and then I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit play okay perfect and we're gonna go to one and I'm gonna use a couple of bombs granites one more time okay hit start and we're getting a value of true so it looks like it's working now and the reason why we're getting true is because we have 16 remaining so let's actually modify the value and I'm gonna change the level so we don't have that many granites and I'm gonna go that's the cool thing about making using JSON for some of our levels so let me just find that so I have that under resources okay so prefabs okay perfect levels so if I go to level one I actually gonna say let's actually say that we have two two of those on level one and I'm gonna go back to unity let's just replay and I'm actually gonna use all the granites in this case so so I only have two so I'm gonna use two hit start and I expect to get basically a false because I don't have any granites left so if we go back into the destruction manager that's basically what this is doing is basically you know searching that list and then determining if I have any granites left if I do have some left I'm returning you know I'm returning a true otherwise I'm returning a false so that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video and, and what I walk you through you know what an action was what a funk is and also how a predicate works and I also added generics because I think generics are very powerful and Unity is adding a lot of new features to, you know, they're, they're very, they're up to date with the .NET framework. So it's really cool to be able to use some of these powerful, you know, C-sharp semantics right inside of Unity when you're making a game. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know through, you know, through the comments in the video. Don't forget to follow me in social media. And also don't forget to share and subscribe to this video. Thank you guys.